but he gave me an anabolic All right. So we are talking about delegation and being superwoman, which I kind of hate that saying, but we all are superwomen. Sometimes <laughs> I want to deny it, but we are. So, um, and how do we do all that we want to do and do it well and feel good about it too? Like that's the important part <laughs> is to feel good about it too. Um, and so we're going to talk about balance and consistency and planning and power hour and all kinds of crazy stuff tonight. Um, so I think that how we kind of view being a superwoman in our lives is a lot of times dictated <laughs> in some part by how we were brought up, um, how our family ran when we were growing up, how you know, if you're married or have a significant other, how their family ran as they were growing up and how they view that. Um, for me, my mom stayed home to let, with us till I was 15. And then not only was she doing Mary Kay, she started working full time as an assistant manager at Hardee's. <laughs> Crazy. Um, and um, so our our lives, my dad was a preacher, and so he was home pretty much all the time. He had a study at our house, and so he was, he was there. My mom was always there. Everyone was always there. <laughs> it's kind of weird, kind of a weird house to grow up in. Um, but I think that kind of shaped my desire growing up to want to be a stay-at-home mom, even though that has evolved over time to wanting to be a work-at-home mom, um, for sure. And so I think that we all come to it with, like, these different ideas of, what it's supposed to look like. And sometimes they're good things and sometimes they're things that we need to like get over. <laughs> um, but um, so I would say that the very first thing and one of your homework assignments today is gonna be to do this task and you've probably done it before if you've been in Mary Kay for any time, but um, is to be really clear about why you're doing your Mary Kay business. And when you know your why, then what it looks like to be superwoman in your life and business and home will be a little bit more clear to you um, for a lot of reasons. So one of the activities that you're going to do today is to write down for your next goal that you want to meet the 50 reasons why you want to do it. And if you've done this before, you know, like you have to write 50 reasons. You have to write all 50 of them, <laughs> and you're going to be like, you're going to get to like 30 and think, I can't think of anything else, <laughs> but you have to keep going, um, and then narrow it down to 25, narrow it down to 10, narrow it down to 5, and then narrow it down to 3, and from there, you'll be able to create like a mission statement for what you want your business and life and family to kind of look like, um, and so <clears throat> that is... I think the first most important thing is knowing your why, because then everything else that we're going to kind of talk about today kind of relieves itself a little bit. Like um, we're going to talk about guilt and um, about how do you stay motivated over the long haul for consistency's sake and things like that. And when you know your why, all of that stuff becomes a lot easier. So. Um, that's the first thing. All right, so delegation. Um, I It was kind of funny that this was the training this week because I've gotten to listen to two really awesome training sessions about this particular topic this week. I was like, well, that's perfect timing. Um, one was with Leah Laughlin. Um, Amber and I have been participating in her pace setters program that she did for directors and DIQs called The One Thing um, Pace Setters, and it was based on the book, The One Thing by Gary Keller. And she did, it was actually, I guess, last Monday, um, she did a Google Hangout for four weeks in a row, and last week was about delegation. Um, and so she shared some things that she's noticed in her time as a top sales director, international sales director, and then Amy Gamboyan is another one who just sent out three really awesome messages um, for directors about how do you work your business and work it well with small children. So, uh, you know, that was relevant to me, but also a lot of it talked about the things that we were talking about here. So those were two things that were really, really helpful to me. <laughs> um, Mary Kay Ash 
from the very beginning of our company. And I meant to look up some quotes about from her before I left today, and I totally forgot. And I was like, dang it, my book's at home. But I'm going to look some up. I'll send some out in the boot camp boxer group. But um, just about delegation. She felt really strongly about the fact that we needed to be delegating to other people in our lives, and we needed to have help, that we shouldn't be trying to be all things to all people in every area of our life as a sure formula for burnout and disgust and, I don't know, what other words can you think of? Frustration, <laughs> Frustration? yeah, for sure, absolutely. Um, and so she felt really strongly, specifically about having help in your home and then help with childcare. Um, and I will say that as a consultant, <coughs> I did not do this for a long time um, until I was looking at going into qualifications to become a director. And for some reason, when it came time for that, I was like, oh, I really should probably take that seriously. <laughs> I, d I had had some um, office help, very minimal, but just like a couple hours a week, a little high school girl would come in and put all my stuff into the computer and that stuff. I played on lip gloss for like the first year. She was mm -hmm. totally happy. I was totally happy. It was <laughs> wonderful. Um, but anyway, um, so that was about, that was the only part that I had really done, but I hadn't gotten like help in my home and things like that. So that's definitely been something that has evolved over time. I will tell you, it has changed my life. I remember Pam Shaw saying um, that she, when she is happiest, when everyone around her is working, that's totally me. <laughs> like today when I left my house, um, the babysitter was there with the two kids and they were playing, but they were going to take a break in like 10 minutes. They were going to unload the dishwasher and put all the dishes away and then reload the dishwasher. My office assistant was there and she was getting all my bags ready for a party that I have for tomorrow night. And she was entering stuff into the computer and then she was going to make dinner for my family. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I feel like crap and it's the perfect day. Like <laughs> everything about that makes me so happy. Um, so we don't have like a super fancy house. Adam drives our van that's got like 200,000 miles on it. You know, like I want acts of service is my love language. So as I've learned that over the years, it makes sense that help makes me happy. <laughs> but it really does. And I've gone through phases with it. So, um, I had the little high school girl that would come a couple times a week and help just inputting stuff. Then as I went into DIQ, I knew that I needed some more significant child care help and things like that. Um, child care is something that held me back for a long time. People tell me, like, we just have a crazy schedule. My husband's gone, like, <laughs> seven to six every day, and I'm like, I hate you. Um, <laughs> You know, like, if I could describe to you, so let me describe to you just this week or next week, any week, really. I mean, like our typical week, Adam is gone two to three 24-hour shifts per week, and then he works two to three days, 12-hour days at another job because he's crazy and he loves what he does, you know. Um, he's the chief at the Northern Pendleton Fire Department, so he's got one or two evenings a week that he's gone there. I've got Mary Kay stuff one or two evenings a week. Our schedule is like, if other people look at it, they look in and they're like, you people are insane. <laughs> but it works for us. We've figured out how to make it all work together. That's part of the reason that we homeschool is so that we have the flexibility to be off when we want to be off and that everybody can be off at the same time. We don't have to worry about the kids being in school or whatever. Um, <coughs> but <coughs> I... I, I will say I kind of dug in my heels a little bit as a consultant. Like I, I had in my mind what the stay-at-home mom should be like, and Pinterest did not help that situation. <laughs> um, as far as expectations that I had for myself, as far as what my house should look like and what my meals should be like, and the things that I should be doing with my kids and and all of that kind of stuff, um, and. Leah said that too in the training. She said she's seen time and again consultants and directors when somebody mentions that you need to hire help. It's like people's brains just kind of stop listening for a couple of reasons. One, they think I should be able to do it all. 
and do it all well. Or someone in their life has told them something negative about having help in their house. Um, I do remember like when we first started having someone clean our house, I don't think anyone in my family knew for like the first year that someone was cleaning our house. Now they all know and I don't even care. I'm like, yeah, you can come over. She just came yesterday. Perfect. Um, <laughs> it's so clean, pretty much. Um, <laughs> <coughs> um, spending the money to get the hired help a lot of times is a roadblock in people's minds and so what are some reasons if if you feel like that might have been a roadblock for you in the past or now what are some reasons that you feel like it's been a roadblock for you well for us it's always it's just been a difficulty to find the right person to clean our house. Right. Which, thank you very much. I know, Jason's so, awesome. Yeah, um, so we, because we've had it on and off over the years, and it was hard to just find people that were dependable. Yeah. And I knew I could depend on myself. Yeah. So. Yeah. I've been really lucky. You know, the last several years, we had a woman, one woman that cleaned the house for like two years, and then her husband retired, and she called me one day, and she was, I was like nervous because she didn't really call me on a regular basis, and she was kind to tell me that she was retiring too, and she felt awful. She waited till like the last minute to tell me, and I was like, Teresa, <laughs> I'm happy for you. I mean, I'm super sad for me, but I'm happy for you. <laughs> and she referred me to someone else who cleans our house now. Who just was in a terrible car accident last week and broke her leg and is in rehab and i think she's going to be off for like six months so i'm going to have to <laughs> jason come too um but yeah um so anyway <laughs> i didn't tell anybody for a long time because my mom was a stay-at-home mom and in my family's eyes that's kind of what i was doing even though they know like yeah you do this very key thing yeah you drive a free car blah 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 I don't think they necessarily want to think about or consider the work that goes into that part of it too, the time that it takes to do that. My mom does, but there are members of my family who probably would have things to say, and I knew that going into it, you know, so I just kind of kept quiet about it for a long time. Um, significant others who have something to say about it who are like, you don't need that, you can... I think for a while my husband was probably that way until the first time someone cleaned our house and we came home and it was spotless because when I do it, it's never all spotless at the same time <laughs> because the kids are there, you know, like <laughs> you walk in the house and everything smells like lemony fresh and amazing. And you're like, oh. he's like, yes, this is perfect. I'm like, I know, isn't it awesome? <laughs> what were you going to say? I am ridiculous as this sounds. Like my struggle with getting help in the office and my roadblock um, throughout my years, like earlier, was that I was I felt so unorganized mm -hmm. that I was like I don't even know where to begin to tell someone to begin yes. because I I don't even know where. So to begin. true. I remember Cindy Machado Flippin saying that for a long time she resisted getting help. Um, like full-time help because she would have to get up earlier in the mornings than she was used to getting up and like when she finally admitted that to herself and to Pam Shaw I'm sure you know how that went yeah. um, <laughs> but I remember her saying that and I thought that's hilarious but it's so true it makes me be on my game because I know that someone's coming every Tuesday and Thursday and I have to be ready I have I'm paying her to be there mm -hmm. so I have to have something ready for her to do um, yeah it makes you be on top of it I will say that starting out, <laughs> a good test for your new assistant is, can she help you get organized? <laughs> I know she can, she's probably good. <laughs> um, you know, that's something that my sister and I sit down and do fairly often is kind of every six months look through and say, okay, what's kind of working well about the systems that we're using right now? What kind of needs tweaked or fixed? What do we need to improve on? And we just did that. And it's, it's a good feeling when you find that person who can have that conversation with you and it takes sometimes some trial and error like you were saying just finding the right person um and having the patience to go through that time of finding the right person and i think i think for me personally like of course i was like trapped in my house for the last 10 days to <laughs> with the painting and yes and stuff. so i didn't have anything better to do than get organized <laughs> um but that was what you said was definitely a thing but it's just when you get to a point where you're 
the, what is the saying when the the, the pain of change is yes, greater than the pain absolutely of the same. and that's exactly where I'm at. It's like I want to be a director and I don't care what but it's gonna it's not gonna happen yeah, if I keep doing right. this. So if I just so it's like okay, yeah, I need because I mean I had sales tickets from like November that were just like Sitting thrown there. thrown all over the place. Yeah. It's like, this can't be like this. I'll have consultants who the day of the for a customer program being due, you know, are like frantically entering right. all their stuff. Right. I know you're trying, you're, we're not in our head because we've all been there, right? Frantically entering their customers to get everybody into the PC free program. And can I tell you how peaceful it is to just be like, click, right. <laughs> right. click and roll. All the last, all everyone added since the last time, you know, like it's oh, so much easier or to not even have to do that. For your assistant to go click <laughs> and it's done. Um, such peace comes from doing that. Um, one of the things that Leah said, and I think it's so true, she said, if you try to excel without the right help, it will continue to be an obstacle. You, yes, you can have bursts of success and momentum, but it's not sustainable or you're going to be burnt out from it. Um, and I honestly, I just experienced this myself. Um, my office assistant is awesome. She's like an adult. <laughs> she has a full-time job. She works at Fifth Third. When I, the last time that I was looking for someone to fill that position, I posted on Facebook, and I was completely shocked when she messaged me and said I would love to do it. And it was one of those moments where I was just like, I cried a little bit because I was like, seriously, God, this is what you're gonna give me? <laughs> She's amazing. Um, and it was immediate, like it happened the same day and it was done and I knew she'd be perfect for it. And um, so <clears throat> she had been doing Tuesdays and Thursday afternoon, like eight hours a week. She got a new boss at work um, and she was getting all of her hours in, but she was leaving early two days a week, still getting all of her hours in and he didn't like that. And so we had to adjust some things. And so she's only coming on Thursdays now. Well, that was a big change for me and that happened in the fall and I had gone July, August and September last year doing Gen X Elite activity and doing it well, like feeling pretty good about it. But I think it was August or September when she had to make that change because of work. And I didn't I didn't have replacement for childcare. I didn't have a system for getting her set up to do stuff from home. Um, cause she, while she can't come to me, she's still doing stuff from home on Tuesdays when she gets home from work. Um, so I was like struggling through that. And so August, the last half of August and September, while I was still doing the Gen X lead activity, it wasn't as comfortable as it had been <laughs> to do it, you know, um, plus running the unit and all that kind of stuff. And so October, November, and December, guess what Corey did not do? <laughs> the next lead activity <laughs> um, and so when the new year started and of course looking forward now to like new baby coming in a few weeks I was like I gotta get this back under control and so I've hired a lot of extra new help in the last few weeks and I feel like things are finally getting back into the rhythm where they need to be and guess what has happened this month I've already done like 28 faces and you know so it it goes, it's so strongly correlated and I can see it just in my own life in the last few months, what a difference it makes. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that we do as leaders in Mary Kay and all of you that are listening to this are leaders or you wouldn't be listening to it um, or you have the desire to be leaders if you're not leaders yet, but I think you are or you wouldn't be here, um, is that we want to share with others what we have and if people can't look at our life and see that we are having joy in the journey of Mary Kay are they going to want to do what we do <laughs> probably not you know if they see that we are stressed out and like crazy people all the time not that we don't have moments of stress we all have moments of stress you know um we do we're not we're not perfect all the time no one is um but you know what have you been not willing to do one of the questions that Leah asked what what level of help have you been pretending not to need? And that's where I was for a little bit. Like when Corinne couldn't do both days, I was like, well, we can probably make this work. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. It was not okay. <laughs> not okay. And with a new baby coming, we need even more help than we've, than we've had, you know? And so I've really set up now 
so that when the new baby comes, we're already ready to go. Um, because I can't send the new baby into the other room to play while mommy works and makes a phone call, right? <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> um Lee also said, if you really believe that God has called you to this, you'll do what, it's ne what is necessary to fulfill that calling. Otherwise, the regret that you'll have and that you'll feel for not fulfilling that calling, like that can overwhelm you and, and hold you back. When you're like thinking, I could have, should have, whatever, that holds you back after a while. Um, Things that you'll miss out on from not being obedient to, you know, people that you would have met in your life or opportunities that you and your family would have had. Um, one of the ideas that the book, the one thing called, talks about is counterbalance. And I love this because how many of you have ever said yourself or who have ever talked to somebody um, about perhaps joining your team in Mary Kay? And she said, um, well, I'm just a girl who wants to give 100%. And if I can't give something 100%, I, you know, this is not just not the right time for me. And we probably either said those things or heard those things before, right? Um, it's never going to happen. We're never going to be able to give anything in our life 100%. Just because you join Mary Kay doesn't mean that you're going to give Mary Kay 100% of your time. Because you're a, you know, wife or girlfriend or whatever, you don't give your significant other 100% of your time. If you're a mom, you don't give your kids 100% of your time. When you're a Christian, you don't give, you don't spend 100% of your time praying. You know, like, it's just not possible. And when you think about it like that, it's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and sometimes we can think, if I'm not doing this all the time, then I'm not giving it everything I could. No, you just use the time that you have. And um, Amy Gamboyan said, and whatever we do, we just need to be totally present. Um, the whole idea of loving the one you're with, you know, whether you're doing, doing Mary Kay or whether you're with your family, you're there, you're there 150%, you're totally focused. Um, and there are gonna be seasons of life. The idea of the counterbalance and the one thing is that there are seasons or periods of time where things are gonna look out of balance to you and to everyone else. The joy of what we do is that you can counterbalance that. Um, so Leah, we were using the hashtag, the one thing, in all of our posts on Twitter, and she was having us post. Because that happened, the authors of the book, the one thing, noticed it and contacted her and said, what What can we do to help you guys in this space that are saying, which was really cool. Yeah. yeah, and so they, one of the authors did a Google Hangout with us on Monday night, and it was awesome. Yeah, it was super awesome. Um, so Jay Papazon was on a Google Hangout with us Monday night, and he was saying, you know, he had just been to a big conference for Keller Williams Realty. They had a big conference in New Orleans, and obviously the prep time before leaving to go down there was pretty significant. He was really busy doing that. He was gone for five days from his family, but he's a guy who really values his marriage and values his kids. He had, It was really interesting to hear him because he has a lot of the same values that we do in the Mary Kay culture, and so he said, you know, I came home and two days were dedicated to nothing but being with my family. And I think the same is true for us. You know, when we go away for a career conference or to Dallas or whatever, you know, sometimes I come home, like I came home from leadership in January. I was so, well, I was so exhausted because I'm so pregnant. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I was also like so mentally like fired up and ready to go and like ready but I had just been away from family for a week and desperately missed me. Um, they're all like, wonderful, she does so much for us. We missed her food. Um, <laughs> they last for just a few days and then they forget that they missed me that much. But, um, you know, I have to stop myself and think, all right, I have to take this time to be with them for a few days because I got to counterbalance the time that I just spent that was far away from them. And so there are seasons of life when that happens. I think back to my time in DIQ. Um, <clears throat> there are not many seasons that I would recommend this, but during DIQ, I was willing to do whatever, whenever. <laughs> um, it was one of those times, I told you guys, childcare kind of held me back for a long time because I need childcare more than your average bear. <laughs> with the kids, you know, with homeschooling and with Adam's schedule, 
they are always there. <laughs> they never leave my face. <laughs> and so if I'm going to do anything, somebody else has to be there with them, you know? And so um, there were definitely seasons when in DIQ, I remember, you know, a couple of the months during DIQ, and it took me four months, do not do that. Do not do that. Do as I say, not as I do, please. Um, but looking at a couple of you know calendars from those months, and I'm like, I don't know how how we lived through it, but we did because I went into it with the mindset of I was going to do whatever it took. And before I would go into the mindset, well, if I have childcare set up, then I can set an appointment. Then DIQ changed my whole mindset about that. I set the appointment, and the childcare would figure itself out whatever <laughs> something would work out you know god would provide what i needed they could hide somewhere i don't know <laughs> it was going to be just fine um and i know you know i was in a little bit different situation in diq than a lot of people because a lot of people are doing diq while they're also working a full-time job and so i don't want to not acknowledge that too because i think that's an Im important piece um but it can happen and it can happen with peace if you can look at it with this counterbalance attitude, you know, like it's a short-term sacrifice. It's a period of time that's going to require this from me and my family. If your whole family can go into it with that agreement and with that same goal in mind, then you can come out on the other side. Yeah, you might feel a little tired, <laughs> but you'll have accomplished the goal because you go into it with that mindset. Um, events, you know, is another thing, but. <laughs> there will be seasons when you're working on a big, big goal, whether it's DIQ or whether it's something else, you know, that I think Amber is probably in that place right now as she's getting ready, you know, and working on the trip to Rome. She's in that spot where it's like, whatever it takes, she'll do whatever it takes. And they can have a really awesome family vacation in July, <laughs> you know, after the, the year closes. For me, for me right now, it's like, I'll do whatever it takes for the next six weeks to really work my business really hard so that when the baby comes, I can have peace of mind about taking a few weeks off. You know, I'll still be doing some phone calls and stuff from my home, but I'm not going to be like schlepping my bags around to an appointment after I just had a C-section. Um, <laughs> not happening. <laughs> um, so the other thing that Leah said, and I think this is so true, I don't have you guys ever noticed that it just seems like there are people in life and probably in our lives who can handle more than other people can. And I think in general, we as Mary Kay women, I don't know, like we attract people who can handle a lot, who can have a lot on their plate and do it well. And, and even if they don't come into Mary Kay with that skill, it's something that they can, that we learn over time. Um, and I think part of that is, you know, Leah said, when you're taking time to feed your body, your spirit and your soul, you can bear more emotionally, mentally, physically, and then better prioritize because there's the strength there on the inside that gives you the strength to bear more weight and to carry more demands on you than you would be able to if you weren't taking care of that part on the inside. And so, you know, making sure that you're having a quiet time, you're spending time in reading books that are going to fill you up and motivate you and get you going and listening to Voxer messages that are going to get you going and things like that. So, um, I thought that was a really good good point too that can help you. Um, so Amy and Boyd did these three messages for directors about how to work your business with small children, which were amazing. They were really awesome. The last one, the whole topic was about guilt. And I love it because I think like mommy guilt is a huge thing, but even if you're not a mommy, there's still guilt <laughs> that we deal with, whether it's with significant others or whatever. Um, she said, it's a tactic and a tool of the enemy because it is designed to make us stumble. It does not come from God. It is there to make us, to trip us up and to make us lose our focus about what, what we're really here for and why we're here. And she said she remembered times um, kids crying when she was leaving and she would call back five minutes later to say, how are they doing? And he's like, they're fine. They're playing. They don't even remember. And she's like, that would kind of hurt my feelings a little bit. But then I'm like, no, they're good. <laughs> I think about that with my kids. Like, they're so used to this is what we do. And, you know, it doesn't phase. They don't have like a big fit every time I leave because 
they might have. They they both went through a phase of their life because all kids do, where when mommy leaves the room, it's like, ah. <laughs> but it's not a regular thing anymore because I come back. They know I'm coming back. I'm always there. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> right. And, you know, even if there are times when maybe they wish, they're like, oh, mom, I wish you didn't have to do that today. I want to do this instead. They don't remember that later. Like, you can ask him in a couple of days, like, I'm sorry, you know, sorry that you felt bad the other day when we couldn't get me. He's like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't even remember. They're just good at making you feel guilty in the moment because they want to do what they want to do. Those little brats. Oh, we love them. <laughs> um, and so guilt really, it tries to diminish us and make us feel small. We have to understand our true identity. I think this is where it's so, so important to know why you're doing what you're doing and for your family to know why you're doing what you're doing. Because when you know your why and like, not just like, I want to make more money, like really like, why are you doing this? Because um, sometimes we think that's what it is and it's not really. Like when you when you go through that exercise of figuring out why you're doing this um, and you understand why God has maybe called you to this, that you don't have that guilt as much anymore because you know that it's for a greater purpose. It's for something bigger. Um, she said, if God has blessed you with the business and leadership abilities in that business, and again, I think we're all here because we're leaders. And if you're listening to this, because you're a leader, you know, or you desire to be a leader, then if he's blessed you with the business and leadership abilities in that business, then it is, that is also a piece of your identity. Yes, you are a spouse or, you know, girlfriend or whatever. You are a mom, but being a business owner is also a part of who you are, and you can't ignore that part of who you are to try to go make all these other people happy <laughs> because then something's out of balance then and it's not going to work. Um, and often it's because we've let people put their unrealistic expectations on us of what it's supposed to look like. And I just got I'm thinking of the song from Frozen, let it go, let it go. <laughs> we have to be able to let that go. And yes, are there going to be people in your life who sometimes make comments and say things? For sure. I mean, there's a critic in every corner. But just like we tell people when, you know, they're considering signing up, you know, I wouldn't take advice from anybody that I wouldn't want to trade lives with. The same is true for us. If there's people in your life who are speaking that negativity into your life, take a good look. <laughs> like, are they people that you would want to trade lives with? Probably not. Especially if they're the kind of person who's willing to step up and speak that negativity into someone else. My guess is they're not the kind of person that you want to be. <laughs> Um, and so Amy said, um, that when we plan our yeses, it makes our no's automatic. And I thought, oh, that's so true. Like when you plan, when you know these, this is why I'm doing this. These are the things that are important to my family. It's so easy for you to say no to everything else. Like, no, I don't need to clean that toilet. It doesn't matter if I clean that toilet or somebody else cleans that toilet because I have more important things to do. I've really had to take a hard look at that over the last few months because you all know, like, this pregnancy has kind of sucked for me. <laughs> <laughs> it has not been the easiest time of my life. And so my energy has been way down compared to what it normally is. And so I've really had to look at where I was focusing and what I was spending my energy on because <laughs> I just – didn't have as much as I normally do. And so in order for the most important things to get done, there were some things that just had to not get done. And I had to be able to let that go. Um, there were some things in my life that I was doing, you know, like commitments that I had made that probably weren't the best yes when I made them. <laughs> and I knew that in the back of my head, but I wasn't willing to admit it. But over the last few months, as I've had to really like physically not be able to do as much, <laughs> I had to let them go. And so um, it made it's made it a lot easier now when people are like, can you do blah, blah, blah? Like I normally run the ladies retreat at my church every year. 
I had a couple people come to me in the fall, like, when are we doing the ladies retreat? And I was like, I don't know, when are you doing the ladies retreat? <laughs> and they haven't done one. And I had to be okay with that. You know, like I had to be okay with it, just kind of falling by the wayside. And will there maybe be another time in my life when I might do it? Maybe, maybe not. The people who normally run VBS at our church, um, I've helped them for years and years and years. I've been a big part of that. And they, this was this past summer was their last year doing that. And they kept asking if I want to do it. I was like, nope, sure don't. <laughs> nope. <laughs> what does Pam Shaw always say? She's like, you just laugh at me like, no, but thanks for thinking of me. <laughs> I always love when she does that. Um, when we say yes to a lot of things, we don't have a lot of potency or power or intention in our lives for what we're doing. And so knowing, you know, there's a reason that Mary Kay is based on God first, family second, career third, because those are the three most important things. And everything else can kind of go. <laughs> you know, when you when it's just down to the wire and you're either working on a big goal or you just there's one area of your life that's taking a whole lot more attention and focus you find it easier to let go of those things. Um, the better you get as a leader, the more you're gonna be asked to do. Did you know that? <laughs> so people are gonna be looking at you like, hey, Tanya, I've noticed how well you handle everything in your life. They won't say this out loud. They'll be like, do you wanna be in a room, mom? Do you wanna, you like all, you know, like a million, they'll just be a million things. You wanna be in charge of VBS? You wanna run the ladies retreat? You wanna be blah, blah, blah? You wanna teach them? No, I do not. I do not want to. Do. Um, because when you say, she, Amy said this, and I, it was an interesting way to think about it. One that I probably still struggle with a little bit, if I'm being honest. Um, when you say yes to everything, or when you feel like you have to say yes to everything, you take opportunities away from other people to say yes to things. And I never really yeah. thought about that. Yeah, you know, true. like I've for many, many years been super involved at church. And not that I'm not still involved and you know, we're there every time, but I'm not doing VBS. I'm not doing the ladies retreat. I'm not teaching a ladies class. I'm not, you know, like all these things. It was like 10 things that I was doing. Somebody else is gonna pick up the slack or they're not. And it was never supposed to be happening to begin with. I was just like making it happen. <laughs> By golly, we're gonna have this retreat if anybody wants to come or not. <laughs> I'm just hanging out, chilling, eating my buffalo dip. <laughs> but you know, like I was, I was minimizing my influence and effectiveness by trying to be all things to all people for a long time, and you just can't do that. Something will suffer, and. In my case, because I'm a very task-oriented person, um, most of the time it's the people in my life that would suffer. My family would suffer from that because I would be so busy getting everything done that I would ignore them or snap at them or, you know, just not be who I wanted to be. Um, and that's just me being totally real. <laughs> People are like, you're too nice. I'm like, oh, we should hang out at my house for a day. My kids would be like, no, she is me. <laughs> she is me. <laughs> um, um, and so Amy said, we need to have a hashtag, write my own story. I'm writing my own story. I'm not worrying about what everybody else thinks I should be doing. Um, the opinions of other people don't matter. We're let it go. Everybody singing with me, let it go. <laughs> um, there's a saying that says, if you live by other people's approval, you will die by their rejection. There are people in your life that you're never, ever, ever going to make happy. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what you do. Um, sure. And so as much as you try to be what they think you should be, it's never, it's never going to work for you. <laughs> and so you got to do you. You got to do what works for you and for your family. And what I love about talking about delegation and stuff, oftentimes people are like, "So, what's your schedule like? Like, how long, how much do you have childcare? When do you work?" Blah, blah blah blah. And I can tell you all that. I can tell you exactly when I work and when I do. But really, it's trial and error. You got to figure out for yourself what works for you and your family. I have a crazy schedule. <laughs> my husband is gone like 36 hours at a time, and so. I tell my unit, I'm like, you have to turn off your box for notifications because sometimes I work really late on nights when he's gone because why not? <laughs> um, 
that's not going to work for everybody. And so you got to figure out your own stuff for your business and for your home life, your own routines and structures and practices that are going to work. Have a family meeting with them. Talk about what's most important. Sometimes we feel like everything is most important. As moms, we're like, we can't miss anything. We have to be there for everything. We have to do everything. We have to, we have to be everything. And I think sometimes people think that that is maybe how I feel as a homeschool mom. But I'm totally not. I'm like, yeah, I have so much fun. Um, <laughs> um, what's most important for you this week to be there? Sometimes we think it's like the big game that they have or something, you know, something that we think in our mind, that's the most important thing in them this week. And really the most important thing it would be if you ask them, they want to go out to coffee with you or something, you know, like, but you can't get to know that unless you have a family meeting about it. I remember <laughs> great advice I got when I got married was asking your husband what was, what would, what were the most important things for him that I would, that I could do that would make him feel loved or cherished or respected or whatever. Cause sometimes I think it's like keeping a perfect house and cooking a perfect meal. And he couldn't care less about that. My husband would be fine if we had ate out every single freaking meal. Drives me insane. Um, <laughs> but, you know, in my mind, I was thinking, like, I wasn't a good wife if I wasn't cooking everything. And he's like, we can totally go out. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Relax, chill. Let's go get some burgers. Um, <laughs> so having a family meeting and ironing that out. And it's not just with husbands and the kids. Sometimes parents, like, we think that they expect us to be there for all this stuff. And they don't. They don't care. <laughs> or they do. And you have to know what things are the really important things. Like my family has a family reunion every summer. It's super important to my mom. Do I enjoy going to the family reunion all the time? It's on a farm in the middle of Kentucky in the middle of July. It's hot. There's bugs everywhere. I don't like bugs. Mm -hmm. I like hot. <laughs> but I go because it's really important to my mom. <laughs> and so there's other things that I can ignore because I know what's important to her. Um, you guys know, if you've heard Pam Shaw talk about designing your life, <coughs> but it's not just about designing your life, it's having the courage to be able to live it. And so, designing your life, planning. I talked about this the last time I was in here. I feel like I'm a broken record with this training, but weekly plan sheet. How many people consistently do a weekly plan sheet? I know, right? It started this week. <laughs> Yay, that's good. It's a start. And we hear about it all the time, right? And how much of a difference it will make. It will. But unless you try it, you're not going to know. Um, my director says to put a place on the weekly plan sheet to make next week's weekly plan sheet. Exactly. You have to, planning time. You have to write in the planning time. Um, for me, I have an ideal week that's printed. It's actually ideal every third week because of Adam's schedule, the way it falls out, you know, like it's different every week. It goes in a three week cycle. So I have three ideal weeks back to back hanging on our fridge that I can just switch back and forth. And it's not what every look, week looks like, but it's a good reminder to me of what I want it to look like. But then I can sit down every Sunday night and plan out exactly what this specific week looks like. And I'll be honest, my brain rebels against this crap. Like, I don't want to do it. Every Sunday night, it comes down to like, oh my gosh, I have to plan. <laughs> and there's a million, I'd rather plan. I'd rather do anything. I don't know why, but, well, I do know why, because <laughs> Brandon and Joe have told me why. <laughs> but when entrepreneurs in general, we just have that rebellious mindset. Like, we have this, like, free spirit, you know, we want to do what we want to do when we want to do it kind of thing in general. Um, so our, our brain rebels against it, but it's so important. That's one of the things that, that Jay Papazon talked about was, you know, he makes out his schedule and his schedule is his boss. And so if his schedule says he's supposed to do something right now, he's supposed to do it. Can't get out of it. Can't talk himself out of it. Um, and so that starts with doing a brain dump. And that's so one thing that you're doing is the 50 reasons why the other thing is um, <coughs> sorry the other thing is doing a brain dump writing down everything that you can think of in your life that needs to get done like everything and it sounds overwhelming you're thinking right now oh my gosh I'm gonna be writing for an hour I promise you after like 10 15 <coughs> minutes you're gonna run out of crap to write them <laughs> and you're gonna be like oh well it's not as bad as I thought it would be um, and the more you do it 
everything in your life that's running around in your brain, driving you crazy. I need to do this and this and this and this and this. Write it down. It will free your brain when you write it down. Um, and then the point of doing the brain dump is not just to write it down and free your brain, but then to go back through the list and pick out the things that you can delegate. <laughs> and what Joe and Brandon have always told me is to pretend like they're standing over my shoulder as I'm making the list of things that I can delegate. Because in general, <laughs> we all think that there's less that we can delegate than we really can. <laughs> Because there's things that we think we need to do um, that we don't necessarily have to do. And so if it's for you, not Brandon and Joe, what about if it's Amber or I standing over your shoulder watching you put the D next to the things on your list that you could delegate or not? <laughs> what would we say you could delegate? Somebody who's impartial and not looking at your list with like emotions attached to it. Um, and then, so let me... I took a picture, hold on. Some things that might help you as you're figuring out the delegation part. So they said to put a D or a check mark or whatever next to everything that can be delegated, not just the ones that you think you can delegate, but any task that an objective observer would say that someone else could perform. An example of a task that you couldn't delegate if you breastfeed your kid. You kind of got to do that, right? <laughs> but, you know, nobody can pee for you. I've thought a lot, a few times in the last week that I wish someone could because I'm peeing a lot. Um, and I don't feel like getting up. But, <laughs> um, so ask yourself how, how long you'll do this particular task. So if there's things on your list that you're kind of struggling, like, can I delegate that? Or is that something I need to do? How long will you do this particular task? Like, how many hours over how many years? Laundry, folding laundry. Just how many hours do you think that it takes? Mm -hmm. How many years are you going to do that? Mm -hmm. How long would it take to train someone else to do the task? Mm -hmm. And then identify which one takes longer. I guarantee you it takes less time to train somebody. <laughs> I've been training my kids. My nine-year-old, I'm realizing they do a lot of chores, but there's some stuff that I... I guess I wasn't right. I think he was quite as grown up as he is. But there's stuff that he can do that I have not. And this week he's done a few things because I've been so sick. Like he's been so sweet and helpful. He's like doing whatever I ask him to do, basically. <laughs> and so I'm like, buddy. I told him yesterday, I'm like, you know, now that I know you can do this stuff, he's like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm like, it's just in time, too, because the new baby's coming. He just looked at me. <laughs> um, so it can be kids. It can be your husband. You know, there's there's an art to delegating to your husband. <laughs> you can't really just be like, this is your list. I mean, you can, but it doesn't really get done. That honey-do list, right? <laughs> but there's an art to it. Um, another question. Do you need any of these tasks to be performed correctly? If perfectly, not correctly, perfectly. Yes. <laughs> There's, I know, I know. There are things like as, I know, I know. As, you know, teaching kids to do chores and stuff, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to scream if I have to. I know, you have to like sing that song in your head like a million times. Like, it's okay, it's okay, it's going to be just fine. How many of us are those people who reload the dishwasher after somebody else washes the dishes and loads it, you know? <laughs> right? I know. I know. <laughs> right. Right. And they're like, how'd you do that? I'm like, because I'm smart. Just run it again. Like, what's the problem? I don't understand. I'm probably the first thing like, what is this? We should be talking to Chris. We're, we're not. Surprised. We're not. <laughs> um, and you know, there are some things that will drive you crazy if they're not done the way that you want them to be done. And so then whoever you're delegating it to, whether it's a kid or, you know, like as I've hired people to help clean our house, there are some things that drive me crazy if they're not done. And so I have to be real specific about those things, you know, and say, and most people who are going to be hired to clean your house are going to ask that because they know 
but everybody has their thing that makes them a little bit crazy. I can't stand like a jet tub, and when the little jets are not clean, it makes me insane. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just one of those things. Um, what if you worked on these tasks 24 hours a day and no one appreciated them? Would you still do them? <laughs> <laughs> These are all ways to know. No one appreciates anything I do. <laughs> so that's a good sign that you it might be something that you could delegate to someone else. <laughs> um, do you have pre -con a preconceived notion about these tasks needing to be performed by you because society says you're supposed to? What if you let that go? Mm -hmm. Um, you're like, I don't know. No, no. Um, can any of these tasks be performed without paying someone? An example would be like carpooling or, um, you know, getting kids to lessons or, you know, like mm -hmm. things like that. We've talked about that before. That's why I thought of that example, you know. <laughs> um, can any of them be done paying someone a minimum wage, like my little high school girl I played with lip gloss. Best thing ever. Is it worth it to get it off your plate? Will you make more money being able to do something productive while you delegate? Um, what would you be able to do if you got, if you took some of these tasks off of your plate? How would you feel? Um, for me, you know, having someone else come in and clean my house, the five hours that she's gonna spend cleaning my house, I can either be, typically I'm gone. Um, she comes on Fridays and we're gone to our homeschool co-op and I get to go and spend the time with my kids and otherwise I'd be, well, honestly, I'm telling the truth in the house, which is probably be filthy, but, um, <laughs> and then anytime anyone was coming over, I'd be freaking out to clean it up. Um, <laughs> just being honest. Um, what are you done with? What are the things that you think of that you think I have to do this for the rest of my life? I'm going to lose my freaking mind. Put away laundry. I hate putting away laundry. I don't mind any other parts of it. I hate putting it away. I'm done. I'm over it. Um, and so those are some questions to consider when you're thinking, like, can I delegate this to someone else? <coughs> Doing the six most important things list every night before you go to bed so the next morning you know exactly what you need to do. Um, getting help, you know, house help and child care help. <clears throat> How many hours, when to work, working morning, afternoon. I think all those things are things that are fluid, like it changes from time to time. I think that I have the perfect setup ready for us when this new baby comes, but the new baby's not here yet. Uh -huh. So. I'll let you know in a couple months yeah. how that's really going and we'll reevaluate. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, she hasn't really told me if she's, well, I've told her that she's going to be a very happy baby and she's going to sleep a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and Josiah, I've told everyone this. Josiah's like, well, how do you know? I'm like, yeah. because I've told her that's what's going to happen. But we'll, we'll see. We will see. <laughs> everyone keeps telling me that God will not give me a third child like the second child <laughs> because he wants to, me to be not insane. <laughs> um, maybe. I'm not ready to put it on video. <laughs> See, a lot of their kids I know are angels. I think it's a matter of survival. So. Yep. 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 I think it's going to happen. Um, all right. And then consistency. I think <clears throat> this is another big area that can hold us back. It's just being consistent. Um, kind of like I was telling you guys, that I had awesome, awesome months, July, August, September, August, November, December, not so much. Um, now, did I stop working? No, I was still doing plenty, but I wasn't, I was letting myself off the hook a little bit, so I would get to like 24 phases <laughs> or 21 phases instead of getting all the way to 30. Um, and so what holds us back from being consistent? One, not having the help that we need. Um, not having a plan of how we're going to do it. You just can't keep going for the long haul when you don't have those things in place. Um, it's kind of like Leah said, you know, you can do it in short bursts and then your energy's gone and you have to <laughs> go back and get your energy back and do it again. Um, and honestly, it doesn't matter what level you're working at. 
I tell people this all the time, whatever level you decide to work at, just do it consistently. That is what's going to create confidence for you because even now as a sales director, so around Christmas time and leadership, I did not have a skincare class, like a full-blown skincare class. I did a few faces. The skincare class from like the week before Christmas till after I got back from leadership. It was only like three or four weeks, y'all. And I've been doing this forever. I could do a skincare class in my freaking sleep. <laughs> but getting on the phone again to make the booking calls and holding the appointments, there were nerves there for me <laughs> as a sales director. And so, I, you know, it made me think again, like, your consultants, when they take a little break, that stop and start motion is what will get you every time because it takes so much more energy to get going again <laughs> than it does to just keep going. Um, every time you start over, it's like a major battle with yourself mm -hmm. <laughs> again and again and again. And that's what exhausts you and frustrates you and you know makes us feel like, we, I can't keep doing this. <laughs> this is too hard because we set ourselves up for that by not consistently continuing to work. Um, and because it, we don't have the confidence then to step out and reach out to people for booking and things like that because we lost it because we haven't done an appointment in two months, you know? Um, and the longer you wait, the harder it gets. <laughs> really, it does. I think we've all probably been there at some point, right? <laughs> um, and not that it's not unovercomable because I'm a prime example of the fact that it totally is. <laughs> um, there were many years in my business when I was a stop and start kind of girl. Why do you think it took me eight and a half years to become a collector, you all? Don't follow me. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, please. Um, but I just tell you that to know that I've been there. I know, I know the difference that it makes to be consistently working your business, doing a little bit every day um, or a lot every day, whatever your goal may be. But that's what gives you confidence and what what do you feel like holds you back from being are there other things that i didn't think of that hold you back from being consistent really nothing <laughs> just like letting it's not really the delegation part it's the letting things just get in like i think amber said it on her 13 tips or whatever What's the first thing to get pushed off the plate, Mary Kay? Yeah. When the plate's getting really full, mm -hmm. Mary Kay is always the one that gets pushed off first. Not having the time set aside yeah. for it ahead of time. So then when something happens, it's like, oh, well, I got to do this. I can't worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. <clears throat> Any others? Well, yeah. And I would add to that, like, the things that I'm pushing off for are usually the most important anyway. So it's more, <laughs> it's not like, you know, it's just not, you have like a real reason, like your kid's like really sick or something. It's not like that. It's like, oh, like my dishes need to get done. Like, you know, so. Yeah, it's distraction. Mm -hmm. It's distractions that we let, we let take over from lots of reasons, like fear, mm -hmm. you know, because it's more comfortable, like you were saying, to go over and do the dishes than it is to pick up the phone and call somebody and make an appointment. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. But then if you say, okay, I'm gonna make five calls, then whatever happens is what happens. That's what happens. Yeah. Then I'll go do this. Then when you go and you do the five calls, and then you just, you feel like so much The freedom, tired, the peace, know? yes. Like, okay, now I can go do this and yes. whatever, you know? I always tell people, I, and again, from experience, I tell people that the mental energy that you spend not doing the things that you know you should do takes so much more energy than actually does. doing them. It really does. <laughs> like we spend so much energy running away from the things that we know we should be doing because of fear mm -hmm. about various things that we could have accomplished our goal 14 times <laughs> honestly, in that you've time. you've got enough dishes in the cabinet, they don't really right. need to get washed. And I have plastic forks, yeah. so if we run out of forks, whatever. Right. <laughs> and now Josiah can load and unload the dishwasher and put all the dishes away. He's always, he's been unloading it, but <clears throat> putting them all away, 
That's what I learned this week. He gets it every single one of those already. I'm done. <laughs> that is not my job anymore. <laughs> I know. But we welcome those distractions, don't we? Like we, we're almost we like, yeah. We, we like look around our house and then we're like, my sheet says I'm supposed to be making booking calls right now. What else can I do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was a laundry thing here. It just went off. Uh, you know, like we look for stuff to do instead of it. Um, but because of that, then we have guilt mm -hmm. about what we didn't do. Mm -hmm. So then we go off and we do the laundry. And then later we're spending time with our family. And when we're with our family, we feel guilty because we didn't do what we said we were going to do with our business. And it's like this never ending cycle. <laughs> if we would just do what we said we were gonna do, ah, uh, the freedom and peace that we would have, you know, mm -hmm. and the results that we would have, the money we would have, the team members we would have, we would all freaking be like top sales directors. We let's go to run together, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone. <laughs> um, and so how do you fight those distractions? Um, one is like you were saying, just saying, okay. I want to go do that, but I'm not going to do it until I do this. And that was one of the skills that I definitely learned during DIQ. I used to feel like I wouldn't make booking calls unless I had an hour set aside where I could really concentrate on making booking calls. But what I learned was that when I had 10 minutes to really focus on making some booking calls, and I really did it for the whole 10 minutes, because how many of us, when you sit down to make booking calls for an hour, you're like, do, 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 do. Facebook, Voxer, make a call. All right, let me check Voxer again. Now I'm going to make another call. You, you don't spend the whole hour <laughs> making booking calls a lot of times. Um, so I found when I could, for me, I started out with like 10 minute increments. I would grab those 10 minutes that I would make as many calls as I could in 10 minutes, and I would get so much more done in that amount of time than if I had made it this big thing in my mind where I had to set aside big, awesome amounts of time, you know. Um, and so the concept that Brandon and Joe have taught is using a power hour and busting out your things that you really don't want to do at the beginning of the day. And there's some reasons around this. Um, we all only have so much willpower in our bodies. Like I used to think that we had kind of infinite amounts. Like I just needed to get more willpower. Well, you can't really get more willpower. There's <laughs> Not like there's the bank somewhere where we can go and pick up more willpower and bring it back, you know? And I've heard Leah Laughlin say several times that we're not, we can't get more disciplined. We we can become more disciplined, but it's not like some people are more disciplined than others. Some people just exercise it better than others, you know? Um, and so doing a power hour at the beginning of the day allows you to use your willpower for the good things at the beginning. It's like when you start out the day eating well. You're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat like I should today. I'm gonna be good. No, no peanut M Ms. Um, they're, they're in my purse. It's kind of my thing right now. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, and you start out the day really well. Whatever happens, kids go crazy. Work is bad. You, you know, by the end of the day, you get home and you're like. Get it, I'm ordering pizza. <laughs> you know, and how you can do that day after day after day. The same is kind of true with your business. And I know if you work full time, doing a power hour at the beginning of the day is not necessarily possible to do it right at the beginning of the day. But if you can grab 30 minutes over your lunch break and make booking calls then, you're a lot more likely to do it then than you are if you wait till the end of the day. You know, you think, I'm going to make booking calls at 8 p.m. tonight. By the time it gets to 8 p.m. and you've been through everything that you've been through the, through the day and you've made it through dinner with the kids and everybody's got baths and you've done homework, all you want to do is stare at the wall. You do not want to you do not want to make booking calls. And so I feel like a lot of times we're setting ourselves up for failure where we're not taking into account the fact that we have no willpower at the end of the day. You know? So doing it at the beginning of the day. Same is true for like the beginning of the week. I feel like, you know, I start off Monday a lot of times with more energy than I do by the end of the week. Um, you get to the end of the week, you're just tired and ready for the weekend. And even, we don't have a typical schedule, but somehow even like for me, whether Adam's home or not, Friday night just feels like a sacred night 
do nothing but be lazy, you know? <laughs> um, and so Friday afternoon is probably not the best time for me to plan to do a whole lot of stuff for my business because chances are I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but if I plan to do it on Monday, it'll be better off. And so thinking about that, that'll, that'll help you cut down on distractions too. If you can plan to do power hours or start out with a power 15 minutes, if an hour is a long time, and it is for a lot of us because technology has kind of made us all a little bit ADD. <laughs> um, start out with a power 15 minutes and schedule a couple of those every day. And then work your way up to an hour so that you can get everything done that you need to get done. So your homework is to make your list of why you want to hit your next goal. Remember, you're going to start with 50 reasons. you got to get all 50 and work your way back, you know, narrow it down to 25, narrow it down to 10 down to five and down to three and then to make your list your brain dump of everything in your life that needs to be done right now and then right next to it what you can delegate check off the things that you can delegate to someone else pretend that somebody else is watching you as you're making that list and then with the rest of your list that you can't delegate it's stuff that you need to do whether it's making booking calls or whatever um, <coughs> What'd you say? No, it's probably not the best idea. Um, yeah, totally can delegate text messages. Um, but then with the rest of it, you, you need to pick out like the top six to ten things that you want to get done in the next week and plug that into your weekly plan sheet about when you're going to actually get it done. You know, estimate how much time each thing's going to take you. And there'll be some projects on there. Like there's one project that's been on mine for quite a while and I kept avoiding it because I knew it was going to take a lot of time. But when I finally broke it down to figure out exactly how much time it was going to take me, then I could take 20 minutes a couple of times a week for a few weeks and get it done. Um, it was redoing some of my new consultant systems and it just seemed overwhelming in my brain to get it done. But when I could break it down and say, okay, I can give this an hour this week and an hour next week. And after about four weeks, I should probably have it done, you know, but it just seemed overwhelming to figure out one time to get it all done. Um, then I can make headway and get it done. But <clears throat> plugging those into your calendar and then the next week you do it all over again. And after a you know, three to four weeks of making that brain dump and then figuring out the things that you're going to delegate, figuring out your top six to ten things and plugging them into your calendar, you'll be surprised at how much smaller your list gets <laughs> of things that you need to brain dump all the time, you know, and how much more that you actually do get done if you follow your plan that you make, if you're allowed to be your boss. <laughs> um, it really does work. And I don't know. I mean, I know now that I've worked with Brandon and Joe, I know why we're so resistant to it. But that's, you know, when I asked you all if who's doing with you plan sheet and no one raised their hand, that's not uncommon. <laughs> it's it's a thing that we all hear about and we all talk about. And it's probably one of the big things that holds us back because <laughs> we're, we're unwilling to do what we know we should, <laughs> we've been unwilling to do. We're no longer going to be unwilling to do, but we've been unwilling to do what we know we should. And so send a picture of your list um, and your mission statement and then your, your brain dump. And if you want to get some extra credit, send a picture of your weekly plan sheet this week. <laughs> what you want to, what you're going to do. And, you know, figure out when's going to be the best time for you. Sunday night's the best time for me. I used to try to do it on Monday morning. Never happened. <laughs> can't do it. I don't know why. I need to start the week out with a plan. I can't start my plan, my week out making the plan. <laughs> so, um, all right. It's not stopping. I can't make it stop. Hmm.